right, this is good. Lord, um, let's go to Genesis chapter 40. Y'all there? Amen. And let's look at verse 1. <clears throat> look at verse 1. It says here, and it came to pass, y'all ready? I'm reading from King James, I'm sorry, I switched. And it came to pass these things, after these things, that the butler of the king of Egypt and, and his baker uh, had offended their lord, the king of Egypt. And Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them inward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, um, the place where uh, Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued a season inward. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, the butler and the baker and the king of Egypt, which were bound in the prison. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. And he asked Pharaoh's officers that, uh, and I'm sorry, and asked Pharaoh's officers that were with him in, uh, in the ward of his Lord's house, saying, Wherefore look ye so sadly today? And they said unto him, We have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. And Joseph said unto them, Do not interpretations belong to God? Tell me them, I pray you. Good. 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 Mm, mm, mm. Woo. All right. How many of y'all, before I give you any type of subject, because I really just want to jump into it. How many of y'all um, have gifts that God has given to you? And now I'm talking about talents. Have gifts that God has given to you that you didn't ask for. Amen. Amen. Come on, just by show of hands. Come, come on, y'all don't play with Pat. Just by show of hands. Okay. You didn't ask for it. Now, here's the thing. How many of y'all, uh, those gifts have at some point in time in your life probably got you in trouble? I can't help what I see. Sometimes I say stuff. Okay, okay, let me say it like this. Before I had people in my life to help me understand the gift of the calling on my life, I would see things and I would say stuff that I probably should have kept to myself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay? So, so okay, uh, boy, I want to go a little bit deeper than that. Uh, because I pay attention to detail, I had to learn from my wife, Mika, that everything I see, I shouldn't say. Y'all ain't talking to nobody. Praise God. Come on, help, help pass that out. Yes. Because um, it might be Mama T interpreted the wrong way. Like, I might see somebody and say, boy, Kyla, your eyebrows look nice. If her husband doesn't notice that, that's the problem going back home from church. How come pastor noticed, but you didn't notice I got, y'all know you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. And, and so I had to be taught that God gave me that gift for a specific reason. I know why he gave it to me. And then for me to stand up here and tell you everything, I just use that as an example so you can understand that a lot of times God gives us gifts, right? But those gifts sometimes get us into trouble. What I'm here to tell you that there's a shift during this season. Those gifts are no longer going to get you in trouble. Those gifts actually are going to take you places. Okay. Looking at this, so we start in Genesis, y'all. So Genesis typically, um, very quickly, means um, the beginning, right? And I just got a feeling in my heart and in my mind that I know we're in Genesis, and I know people get real trendy and all of that, but this season I have been praying about it, and God kept putting in my spirit that this will truly be a season of 2020. And when we say that, we're talking about not our vision, but God's vision. Yeah. And so I'm looking at scriptures now, and he's giving me a different twist, a different perspective on it. Usually when we preach about this, we're talking about Joseph. But I really, if I do my job successfully today, I want to talk a little bit about the baker and a little bit about the, the butler so we can see ourselves in the text. Now, before we get there, let me help you understand that I know the word of God and I understand the background behind this. So God has a man named Joseph, right? Yes. Uh, I don't need to give you his mom and his dad and all that kind of good stuff, but I will tell you, Joseph is a truly anointed man of God. He has yes. been highly called uh, by God, chosen by God. And uh, understand that when you're chosen by God, sometimes persecution comes along with that. Yes. When you're chosen by God, sometimes misunderstanding comes along with that. When you're chosen by God, come on, y'all, sometimes bad things happen to good people. Yes. I want to help the church right there because a lot of times if we don't do our jobs right, people think when they give their, lives to, their life to the Lord that everything's going to be perfect. That's not true. Amen. The reason why that's not true is you got to understand that there's a spiritual side and then there's the natural side. Or you got to understand it like this. There's, uh, there, there's God and then there's also the enemy. And the enemy's job is always 24-7 to try to discourage you or get you to the place that uh, where whatever God shows you, it's not going to come to pass. Amen. And that resistance I was just talking about that you experience when you come to church or when you make up your mind to try to do the right thing. Who, how many have experienced that as well, too? You know, you were doing your own thing. Things seem to be going well. And as soon as you say, you know, I'm trying to live for Christ, all hell breaks loose. Amen. Why do you think that that is? 
That happens because of spiritual warfare. And I want you to understand it's really real. It's nothing deep about it. I just need you to stop and think about why you're going through what you're going through. Because if I don't stop and explain it to you like that, many of us will stop. We'll quit. We'll turn around and walk out that door and miss our, miss our blessing because we stop thinking about what truly is happening here. It's the trick of the enemy to try to take you there. Yes, sir. Old school. It's also the trick of the enemy to cause you think that God put you here for you not to enjoy life. That's a lie. Yes, what, what did Jesus say? I said this a couple weeks ago. Jesus says, I've come that you might have life. Watch this now. He didn't say, I come that you might have church. He said, I come that you might have and have it more abundantly. Some of us have put our lives on hold thinking that we were serving and we were pleasing God and you do you did stuff God did not ask you to do. And then you're mad, Lord, I don't know who this is for, and then you're mad at me and everybody else who's going on living their lives, pursuing dreams, setting goals and obtaining them goals. I got news for you. Just about all of the Bible characters that I read about in the Word of God, boy, they were doing some awesome stuff. God was setting them up. And they, they're, watch this. They were not just um, uh, limited to just the four walls. God was taking them places. Boy, this is good. And for those of us that really want to go, God is setting you up. Like right where you are right now, your steps have been ordered by the Lord. You're right there, right where he wants you to be. And I'm just at a point in my life now, Mika, where I want to stop blaming the devil for everything because I figured out a lot of times it's God who's working. Amen. Boy, that helped me out. That freed me up right there, Jeff, because then right then in that moment, Minister Eric, I, ch I had to choose not to be bitter about stuff that happened. Woo! I had to choose not because, you know, once that infection sets in, that can mess you up. Amen. told you all this before. How many of us have had an attitude of been upset about something and the people you upset with don't even know you upset with them and they go, they so thank you, Jesus, glad and hallelujah, happy. Come on, are you all bound and backed up spiritually? Mm -mm. Life is too short. Did y'all hear what the Lord through Minister Carr shared with us today? How that gentleman was at work? I don't know. You know, I'm sensing that he may have had a massive heart attack. I don't know. Think about that. He's at work. I think it was this morning, either yesterday, I read an article where there was a pastor actually preaching, and he just dropped dead while he was preaching. Yes. So you don't have to be sick. Nobody has to necessarily diagnose you with anything. My point is, when your time is up, you out of here. Yes, I don't know about you all. While I got time, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to enjoy it. Come on, stop giving people control and authority and power over you that God never ordained for them to have. Yes, That's a good place to clap. That, that really is a good place to clap. And I recognize, as I get ready to get in Genesis 40, I recognize that there's some people that come to this church and they can't stay because they want me to govern their lives or run their lives, and I'm not going to do that. They want me to tell them everything, and I'm not going to do that. Yes, sir. My job is to teach the Word of God, to preach the Word of God to you. Now, what you do with that, that's between you and God. Yes, it's just like people get mad at me like, Bishop didn't call me. I'm not calling you no more. You know you should come to church. So if you don't come, I'm going to pray for you. But I ain't got time for all of that kind of stuff. Amen. Because when I stand before him, I want him to say, well done. Because he's not going to stand there with a listen and be like, okay, let's discuss all the members of New Bethel. He's going to ask me about me and did I do the right thing. Amen. Boy, this is good. All right. I don't know who that was for, but I trust that you caught it. Genesis chapter 40, right? Now watch this now. When we see in verse 1, and it came to pass, I want you to understand, church, here's the deal. I don't know who this is for. Uh, but truly God is positioning you, I mean in a great place. Please understand, and it came to fast, he's talking about all the things that happened in actually Genesis chapter 39. So we know Joseph has a gift, right? Yes. One of the things that God has given to him amongst many things is that, because he had a gift of administration, organizations, a number of things that he had. One of the things that we all talk about is the ability to be able to dream. So God will show him things before they happen. Yeah, That's powerful. God will show him stuff before it happens. Wow. Now, his problem was he would tell people. I don't know why he didn't stop to think that nobody wants to hear, one day I'm going to rule over you. So, I mean, just real talk. Just certain things I'm going to just keep to myself. Like sometimes I sit over in the corner and I'll see, I close my eyes and see things from a spiritual perspective. Sometimes I can be at home. And I'll be like, don't say nothing. I told Minister Carr last week something had happened, and I heard God very clearly. And I'm very careful about saying God says stuff. Mike, I heard God very clearly say, shut up. And he's talking to me. You know, if something ever happened, Jess, and you really want to handle it, and the Holy Spirit said. And then certain scriptures come up, Minister Eric, that just, I mean, they're just inconvenient. Then vengeance is the Lord's. I already know, but every now and then, give me one or two. The Lord was like, mm-mm, mm-mm, don't handle that. 
And then he kept taking me through the scriptures to help me see, I said, I got it. I need you to shut up. And if you're going to say anything, I need you to pray. And I was like, man, God, come on, y'all. It's only good if you can punch somebody in the mouth. God was like, absolutely not. I need you to be quiet and I need you to pray. And then as a result of being quiet and praying, he began to show me exactly what he was doing. I can't tell you how many times stuff has happened here at the church and it gets to me and I'm like, okay, I need to handle that. But I'll go in prayer first. And while I'm in prayer, God takes care of it. Yeah. Or I'll come down here ready to show up to handle the matter. I mean, in the most spiritual way, and God's already got it worked out. And I'd be like, man, yeah. this is good. So when it came to pass after these things, can we take a moment, y'all, just look at some of them things that happened? I, I forgot to even put myself on that timer. Forgive me. Um, but I'm, I'm really not trying to be long today. Um, God, I just want to read this because I feel like this is where we are. Y'all with Pastor? Look at Genesis 39. Preachers, don't judge me. Those of you, some of you know what I'm talking about. Don't judge me. Just let me, let me flow for a minute. Ah, this is good. I don't want to hear nothing after church either. Genesis 39. <laughs> Actually, thank you, Holy Spirit. I don't have to do all of what we've been trained to do until after class. All right, until we finish. Y'all good? All right, watch this, watch this. Let me flow. Uh, look at verse 30, chapter 39. Real quick, y'all. I'm not going to bore you. Uh, verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, in an, uh, an office of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him uh, of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had bought him uh, down hither. Now, read that one more time, Pastor. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. Okay, Joseph was brought down to Egypt, y'all. Who brought Joseph down to Egypt? Deke says his cousins. Who brought, who brought Joseph down to Egypt? Anybody? <clears throat> Ishmaelites? <clears throat> they sold him, right? Okay, good stuff. Now, I want to take a little bit higher and let you know that that was all ordained by God. All right, now, real mature people can glorify God right there. Even when God brings you down to quote-unquote Egypt, you can bless God right there. Okay, all right, some of you still resistant. Okay, see, see, you, it was you who was just quoting a few moments ago, I will bless the Lord at all times. But what happens when them all times come and it's not a positive time? Can you still bless God? Come, come on, church, I'm trying to take you somewhere. God is setting you up for blessing, for breakthrough. He really is. But it's us a lot of times that can't go there because we got God in the box. So even Mika, when God takes me down to Egypt, he's still with me. Amen. Minister Carr just got, I mean, he was sounding off. I got God on this. I mean, it sounds good when, you know, we flowing. God over here, you know, Jesus over here, the Holy Spirit over there and all that kind of. But can you say that when your back is up against the wall? Why is it that we conveniently forget when we start to go through things? Are you with me? Yes. It's God wants us to remember that. We're going to get to the nitty gritty of it. Oh, oh, this is so good. God, can I just get it out? Because I know they think I'm all over the place. It was God who ordained for him to go to Egypt. Y'all with me? Amen. Now look, y'all, please rejoice in this. Look at verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Ugh. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a... Prosperous. Come on, can y'all shout that out? He was a... And he was in the house of his master, the... All right, can I park there for a minute? It is God's will at times that you would not be the boss. Sometimes God puts you in position because he's really, you're just being used for him to get somebody. And when I say, yes, Deacon, to the right place, yes. When I say that, y'all, we got to be the ones who choose to live for God. Because it's not about us. But we make ourselves available so that the Holy Spirit can use us. Now get this, here's what I'm really after. And in class, many of you know this, I'm finishing up uh, this, this degree. Uh, one of the things that we're discussing now is the difference between marketing and um, branding. See, a lot of people feel like they got to go out there and just market all the time. You don't have to do that. From a biblical perspective, you really don't have to do that. What you need to be worried about is branding. And when I say branding, uh, I'm talking about you follow through. Whatever it is that you have promised your customers that you would do, you do that. Amen. And because of that testimony alone, watch business take off all over the place. Amen. You've heard me share this before, and I think it was Oprah who said it. If you are excellent at what you do, people will always seek you out. Amen. Boy, that helps somebody right there. You don't have, uh, listen, listen, if we do it God's way, you don't even have to spend a whole lot of money. Amen. Just be excellent at what you do. Amen. And you know what happens? Somebody else is going to tell somebody else about you, and somebody else is going to gonna tell somebody else about somebody else about you. And what happens? Your business starts to take off. Yes, sir. Even as it relates to the things of God. Thank Amen. you, Deacon. Even as it relates to the things of God. Ministry works the same way. I have never asked for an opportunity to go preach at somebody's church. You never see me advertising on any of the social media websites and things of that nature. Because I believe wholeheartedly when I read the word of God, I better be excellent at what I do. If I'm excellent at what I do, people seek you out. Amen.
I've never paid for any of that. It might surprise some of you. I turn down much more than what I accept. Why? Because I try to stay sensitive and be like, Lord, is this where you want me? Lord, do you want me to go here? Lord, is this what you're saying? Because let me tell you something, y'all. We're going to read it in just a few minutes. If we're going to really be like Joseph in this season, because I think today's sermon should be entitled The Life of Joseph, we got to understand, when it came time for him to interpret them dreams, watch this now. When he t said the good stuff, it flowed just like butter. And when he gave that negative interpretation, it flowed like butter too. I'm sitting there thinking, you know, he ain't even think twice about telling that brother, your head going to be cut off. The other guy, he was like, oh, you're going to be restored. In three days is exactly what, what's going to happen. You're going to be restored. You're going to be right back with um, the King Pharaoh. Good things are going to happen for you. The other brother, he got you know, encouraged. He was like, well, let me tell you my dream. He says, well, your head going to be cut off. And exactly what he said came to pass. How many of us are that sold out to the Lord where we won't deviate from stuff when he shows it to us? Amen. Or remember a few weeks ago when we were home, we were sharing this with you, how we got to get to the place where we say, no matter what our plans are, God, if this is not your will for my life, then please trash it. Amen. And I know it hurts. I know because you want it. You want it like right now. But you don't stop to think about the fact that he probably wants you to have it too. It just not, might not be the right time. I want it when God wants me to have it. Boy, this Amen. is some good stuff. All right. Practical teaching here. Anybody enjoying the word? Amen. Look at verse 3. Come on. And his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. Lord, anybody else like that? Yes. Any place, this is the season. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Don't ask. Let me just declare it. This is decree and de I shall decree and declare. This is the season where wherever you go, you're going to be prosperous. Yes. Whoever you're, uh, uh, you're working under or working for, they're going to prosper as well. But watch this now. They're also going to know that the reason why they're prospering is because of you. Amen. Mm. Yes. Oh, yes. I went to lunch Friday with an old friend of mine, and it just blessed me. We were talking about this, how she had an old boss reach out to us. She done quit the job twice. He keeps reaching back out. And you know why he keeps reaching back out? Because she's excellent at what she does. Yes. That thing blessed me big time. I was like, Lord, have mercy. Come on, church. That's, that's, the, that's really the season that we're in and what God wants us doing. When you're so good that people knock your door down to get to you. Amen. I don't want this person. I know they're in the business. Nope, he's going to do it right. I'd rather wait for him. When is he available to me? I will wait. This is good. Amen. Yes, God. No matter where this brother went, y'all see what's happening. God keeps raising him up. Let me move down, jump to verse 5 real quickly. And it came to pass from that time that he had made him an overseer in his house. And over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. So y'all see, when Bishop gives you these principles, I ain't making them up. It's in the word of God. Are you with me? Look at verse 6. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had saved the bread which he did eat. Think about that. And Joseph was a godly person and well favored. Think about that. Absolutely everything that this king had, he put in the hands of Joseph. Woo! I believe with all my heart that eventually out of this church is going to come probably one of the mayors of Baltimore. I believe uh, uh, with all my heart, out of this church will come probably the, one of the next comptrollers for the, come on, for the state of Maryland. I believe with all, come on, talk to me, church. Yes. God, God is already positioning us. When I talk to some of our young people, I look at what they're doing and whatnot. I'm so excited, and I pray God will allow me to live to see it. It's going to happen. This is the will of God. He doesn't waste his time putting all of that within us just for it to lie dormant or for it just to be used in these four walls here. He needs you to be out there. Watch this. You know what's really wrong with what's going on in, in, in D.C. that I'm aware of because I don't know everything. I'm not hearing of anybody who's standing up and willing to be godly counsel and advice for our president or our vice president for that matter. We just, Dr. Martin Luther King, just celebrated his birthday. You know, it really, really is a tragedy to Pastor Smith. And then I get back on task. I don't know of any good, strong spiritual leaders that can come and step and get in that man's place. Amen. Some of you may say, oh, we don't need a leader. Yes, we do. People need to see the other people that are coming up that are not selling out. Okay, it's just like New Bethel here. Sometimes y'all know when pastor's going to be home. Sometimes you don't know when I'm going to be home. You know why I set up like that? Because we're not trying to get fans. We need people coming to church who love Jesus. Amen. We need people coming to church who just want to hear the word of God, no matter who it is. Amen. I knew I'd get about three amens right there. Yes. Amen. But that's the way it has to be. Because otherwise, if we keep you know, encouraging you and just building up your ego and what. No, you're going to explode. It's going to be a hot mess to deal with, and that's not God's will. Are you with me? Amen. 
So we see here this brother's blessed. Now I'm, I'm going to skip through a whole bunch of this. The Potiphar's wife sees Joseph and be like, God, that man looked good. He cut. I read y'all so many translations on this. It's, it's funny, all the different things that the writers were saying. Long story short, he was very handsome and he was cut. So I believe Joseph worked out. She kept looking at him and saying, I'm going to get a piece of him. Joseph was like, you got to be out of your mind. She tries to get him. Y'all know the, Most of y'all know the story, right? He turns her down. Now get this. Look at verse 21. Joseph gets put in prison because the woman then lied on him. Verse 21 says, but the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. That's what I'm talking about today. No matter where you end up, Jesus, the favor of God is going to continuously rest upon your life. All right. Can I help you, church? Remember what Bishop said. No matter where you end up, the favor of God is going to rest upon your life. Please, church, come on. I need you to receive that. No matter where you end up, the favor of God is going to rest upon your life. Now, please receive this as well, too. Look at where this brother went. I'm going to read that one more time because I want to make sure we get it. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. Sometimes we struggle because when we go through things in life, we see it as a demotion when it's actually a promotion. I can't tell you that, uh, I can. One of the times in my life that I can recall really quickly is when God allowed me to be laid off from one job. And the reason why he allowed me to be laid off there, Jeff, because I really couldn't hear him. I was so in love with that job, I couldn't hear him say leave. So he had to have them lay me off, only for me to get where I am today, which was a much better place. Amen. Think about that. And making more than what I had ever made in my life. I'm in a much better place. But watch this. It took a demotion of sorts to get me there. That's what I see here, God, for us. During this season, no matter where we are, the favor of God is on our life. The blessings of God are on our life. Yes. And I need you to be able to hear that. And I need you to be able to receive it so that when you end up in certain places, you don't charge God foolishly. Here's what's really interesting about this. As we're looking at the life of Joseph, understand that I can't find where the brother complained. I can't find where he was at least human because he told one of them cats, he says, listen, when you get out of here, please remember me because I'm in here for something I did not do. The problem with that is most prisoners that you talk to say that. And we typically don't know who's telling the truth and who not. If you're ever going to see people who've been locked up, everybody is innocent. You really need God to show you who's really. So as we look at this here, look at verse. This is good. Ah, pages are sticking together. Verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he, he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Good, 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 good. They don't even have to check behind this brother. Well, I firmly believe what doesn't get inspected won't be respected. So I couldn't be Potiphar. I'd have to check behind him just to make sure he was doing what he needed to be doing. But that's the type of favor God gave to him. All right, now verse 40 says, And it came to pass after these things that the build, uh, butler of the king of, uh, of uh, Egypt and his baker had offended their lord the king. Okay. In order, in order for the will of the Lord to take place in everybody's life, God allowed for all three of them to go to jail. Amen. But back, let me back it up for a minute. Guess what? And we see this in church a lot. Sometimes when people get offended or they get upset, they'll be mad and call it the devil. I'm here to tell you that it's not always the devil. They pissed off the king. Now, allow me to take some, uh, some biblical license here and talk to you about the fact that well, um, I don't really know what they did to piss the king off, but the Bible says that he was upset with them. And at least two times, and so he had to have been pretty pissed, uh, says in verse 40, in chapter, I'm sorry, chapter 40, verse 1, that he was offended, and then verse 2, it says he was wroth. So he went from being offended to being extremely angry. Anybody catch that? Now, I happen to think that uh, a plot was unveiled that they were probably, somebody was going to try to kill him. And I really feel like he got mad at them because they didn't tell him. They in chief positions. You let that go. You let somebody run me down, talk about me, set me up, get ready to kill me, and then you didn't say anything. You didn't tell me. I mean, you close to me, real close to me. Like you could have, I could have been taken out. So y'all going to jail? 
And I think as we read through the scripture there, I'll let you read it as a matter of fact, I kind of a, got a chance to see who was telling the truth and who died, who probably lied. Because I think the guy that was telling the truth got set free. But the guy who wasn't telling the truth, hmm, got his head cut off. Yep, that's exactly what I believe happened. So look at this, y'all. And Pharaoh was wroth, that's verse 2, against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them inward in the house of the captain of the guard. Okay, pay attention to that, y'all. Let me read verse 4 too. Into the prison, the place where, uh, where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them, and he served them, and they continued uh, a season inward. That stuck out to pastor. You know why? When we looked at Genesis chapter 39, real quickly, um, Gen what's name? Joseph was in the house of Potiphar, right? It wasn't Potiphar's position. He was the captain of the guard, right? So my thing is this. I don't really think Potiphar really believed that Joseph was trying to sleep with his wife. Because let me tell you, if I found out somebody was trying to sleep with First Lady, yeah. I mean, I got the power and the authority to do it. Yeah, we're we just going to remove you. No problem. We just eliminate the problem. Are you with me? He doesn't do that. He takes him and puts him in prison, but he puts him in an area for which he controls it. He's like, this guy's anointed. Because think about this, y'all. And you say what you want to say. This guy, I really believe Potiphar was like, homeboy is anointed. Everything he touches turns to gold. And I already know I'm only blessed because of him. So I'm not getting rid of him. I got to suffice my wife. But I'm going to keep him close enough where I'm, come on, talk to me. Or I'm still getting them blessings. I'm not getting rid of him. I'm talking about positioning. Let me park right here. Minister Eric, you know what's really what troubles us in the word of God? I think we'd probably be much happier if our lives were written in scripture just like this. Like in Genesis chapter 39, the very last verse, if we saw that Michael such, lost his job, but then you jump to verse 40 and see it, but Michael became CEO, we wouldn't have no problem serving God. The problem is we don't know what's happening between the last verse and the next chapter in our lives. Yes, and we just sit here looking all crazy. And here's the thing, God looking for you to rejoice and be excited just like you are the CEO before he allows that to manifest. How many of us are willing to walk with the Lord like that? You know what Joseph means, y'all? Jehovah adds or God increases. This is the season that we're in. But the thing is, God wants us to know everything that happens in your life that might not seem all that favorable, guess what? It really is him. Anybody ever stop and ask the Lord, um, if Israel could have got to the promised land in days, why in the world did he take them all through the... You know, the scripture says, I think it's Exodus, maybe chapter 13 or something like that. You know what's interesting about that? When you read it in, you know, different translations, you come to see, God says, I didn't take them the easy way because they were going to run past the Philistines. And if they had run past the Philistines, what they were going to do was turn around and go back to Egypt. You know why? Because we like familiar. We like comfortable. Nobody likes to be stretched. Talk to me, somebody. Even as God shows me and gives me fresh vision for our church, it's going to cause us to be stretched. And most people don't want to be stretched. Oh, let me take some more time right there. This is good. Yes, this is good. Thank you, Elder Fleming, for that, that clap. Yes. Listen, listen. This is the struggle that many people face. A reluctance to try something new. To veer off into uncharted territory. To stray from our comfort zones. God knew that the wilderness, watch this, experience would unify Israel. Ooh. Yes. Watch this. In that process, because get this, even Pastor Smith, Everybody who says that they're with me really is not with me. Amen. And I know that. Amen. We don't want to accept that, but that's the truth. And so what God does, he allows them wilderness experiences to come every now and then in our lives to show us who's really with us. Amen. And to unify us. Amen. Like I firmly believe within my heart, just everybody that I see today, I really think y'all with me. After all that we've been through through this season here, I really believe you're with me. I mean, we've seen each other at our worst. We've seen each other at our best. At this point, y'all just hanging out to see what does God have next. Yes. Amen. 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 I mean, come on, y'all. We've fought together. We've cried together. We've prayed together. We've fasted together. We've given up together. I'm tired. You're tired. I mean, but guess what? We're still here. But watch this. What brings us close together like that? It's our experiences. Amen. God could have taken us, y'all. We could have paid off this church years ago. Why did he allow us to go through this process? Because somebody's faith needed to be increased? Here's something else, too. That it, 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 it bothers me, but I recognize it's part of the process. There's nothing I can do. Sometimes, too, he will allow us to wander around just enough for the right people to drop off because he knows they can't come with you. 
Okay, let me prove it to you a little bit further. Abraham was a great guy. One of the mistakes that he made was he brought Lot along. God never told him to do that. We family. God ain't asking nothing about your family. I told you to come. And because you was trying to help Lot out, then all hell breaks loose. Come on, y'all. During this season, be sensitive about who's in your circle. Because everybody that's in your ear, God didn't sin. And here's the beautiful thing about it, y'all. I am so convinced it's just as simple. The word says, my sheep know my voice and the stranger they won't follow, right? So that lets me know in my quiet time, if I spend time with the Lord, God going to talk to me. I love y'all daily, but I want you equipped. You don't have to have Bishop to tell you everything. Amen. What you need to, if I'm doing my job right, you need to be in face of God, hearing God for yourself. And by the time you come here, I'm going to be confirmation. Amen. I wish I could get some more help up in here today. Yep, when I go other places, we can jump, scream, howl, all that kind of good stuff. Y'all get the real deal. I mean, in love, God knows. Because I really believe with all my heart this season, no matter where we go, there's going to be favor upon our lives. Hallelujah. And understand this too, church. I, I, I got to share this. When the Lord does it, when it manifests in your life, please give glory to God. Amen. Amen. Oh, come on, church. Please Amen. give glory to God. Please don't, don't say it was my... Please just give credit to God. Can you do that for me? Because that's what he wants. That's truly what he wants. But I don't know about you all, but we're in a place now where I recognize that the harder we work for something, the more we appreciate it. That's another reason why we had to go through that process, that wilderness experience. And it's funny, I see that biblical principle many places in my life. The ministers are going through a process now. And I'm like, wow, this is awesome. Because you know what? It forces us to bond together. It forces us to depend on one another. When I was going through the process to become a fraternity brother, same thing. They intentionally had us doing crazy stuff, but it forced us to be together. Until this day, we still check in with each other, no matter where we're going or where we are. We could be going out the country. You letting your line brothers know what time it is. I get it. And you know what? Church is the only place where people fight that. Sometimes we just want you to check in with one another because we care for you, because we love you. Yes. But you know what Satan says? Ah, they trying to control. It ain't control. We just want to make sure you're okay. If you're used Amen. to being here, you're not here. I want to make sure you're okay. Amen. Don't nobody do that at work. I'm just not coming today, and I'm not calling anybody. I don't think you're going to be employed too much longer. Are you with me? Boy, this is some good stuff. All right. Let me talk some more to you. Uh, Genesis chapter 40. So we see them getting set up, right? How many of y'all excited about Joseph's story? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Why'd y'all clap? Just a question. Uh, or Deke said I encourage you to. Anybody else? Watch y'all clap. Excited. Sound good. Ooh, that sounds good. Abe. I believe you. You're right. Somebody give her a round of applause. You're right. Okay, now we gave her a kudos. Now, really. You said I encourage y'all. Minister said we're excited. Abe said, I know all things work together for the good. All right, now I want the church to remember that when you go through your process, I want you to remember that. I want you to remember that all things are working together for the good. If God tells me to go someplace and only two people show up, all things are working together for my good. If God tells me to go someplace and 2,000 show up, all things are working together for my good. If I show up Monday and they say, Mr. Smith, we're letting you go. We have, um, your, your job has been phased out. Okay, now watch this. Now really where he wants us to get to, the place where he wants us to get to is that our praise is not predicated upon what we're going through. Our praise is predicated upon who he is. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. So I can have that spiritual hype 24-7 because I know whose I am. Yes. And I know who I am. Amen. What do we learn from the life of, life of Joseph? That no matter where he is, that brother is giving God praise and glory. Now how do I know? Can I prove to you how I know it's God's will that he become better and not bitter? Ooh, this is good. Somebody say, yes, preach bishop. Preach, bishop. I know I'm teaching, but this is some good stuff, y'all. Look at, here are the points I want to share with you for this season. Look at verse, we got it written down here. Look at verse 5, y'all. And they dreamed a dream, both of them, each man his dream in one night, each man according to the interpretation of his dream, uh, the butler and the baker and the king of Egypt, which were bound in prison. Let me read verse 6. And Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them, and behold, they were sad. Okay. Can I tell you how I know that he was probably better and not bitter? Can I tell y'all? 
if I'm in jail or doing time for a crime I didn't commit, I am not worried about anybody else. I'm mad. I'm upset. And here's the other thing, y'all. If I go to jail and I'm, you know, and I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do with the Lord, you know, as it relates to my walk with Christ, most of us would probably accept that we probably in jail because we backslid or because we ain't served God, all that kind of good stuff, right? The homeboy was serving God and went to jail. Falsely accused. How many of us can still hang out with God then? And then on top of that, not be bitter, because come on, y'all, we're talking about real church folk, and this is what the church is made up of. A lot of people in church, we here, but we bitter. Can I say that, again? say that again? A lot of us are here, but we're bitter. Why? What are you upset about? Are you upset because something happened to you? Bad? Are you upset that God didn't bring you through the way you bring you out the way you thought He was going to bring you out? Like, I mean, I just want you to think about that. Don't answer. I just want you to think about what am I really upset about? Or what do I have an attitude about? Do you have any mornings that you get up and you just know you have an attitude? Not everybody else. You have an attitude. Why do you have an attitude? I mean, I hope you have conversations with yourself like that. Because if you don't, you just be spewing poison all over the place. Amen. You got to stop and ask yourself, what's wrong with... I think Joseph did that. Because look, look, when they get up, they all go to sleep. When they get up, they've had dreams. And he's like, what's wrong with y'all? Anybody who's selfish ain't worrying about somebody else. Amen. All you saying is, God bless me, my four no more, if that's it. Or you're just asking God to bless you. Joseph, I'm sure, was made better, but not bitter. Because he's still looking out for others. Wow. I don't know if y'all could have did that. Let me jump back to verse 5 again. Anybody ever ask God, why does he deal with us in dreams? We have several people in the church that God gives dreams to. Can I tell you something, church? During this season, we talked about a couple weeks ago, God wants you to walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. Bishop, you say that all the time. Okay, do me a favor. I want you to do me a favor. Get in your mind something that you want God to do for you. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to see whatever it is that you need God to do for you. I want you to see it done. Anybody got it? Amen. All right, now open your eyes. Remember, don't operate off of what you saw. Op operate off of the vision God gave to you. Let me let you in on the secret. I saw when I closed our eyes, I saw our brand new edifice. I don't let what I see today, this is paid off and this is ours, I don't let what I see today prevent me from rejoicing in the fact that God already has a new place for us paid off. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. Can I share this with you all too? The difference between, we talked about it a couple weeks ago, sight um, and vision. I share this in, in uh, Atlanta, and I want to share it again today because it, I just think it's a blessing. There's a lady by the name of Fanny Crosby, y'all. She was a blind woman, uh, and um, think about this. She was blind at birth, or very early on in her child age, as history should say, because a doctor made a mistake, so we call it malpractice. You with me? Now get this. Fanny Crosby, a popular hymn writer of yesteryear, wrote anywhere between 5,500 to 9,000 hymns. One of them, as we all know, is Blessed Assurance. Listen to this. Fanny made her impact. She made every day count. What might surprise you is that, again, she was blind since early childhood due to a doctor's mistake. She didn't complain. She didn't become bitter. But every day she wrote a new song to God. You know what got her over that, y'all? Watch this. Ooh. She understood that vision without action is a daydream, and action without a vision is a nightmare. Sometimes when she would write, she would write several songs a day. But get this, y'all. She realized that her purpose was to sing to God and thereby be a blessing to so many. Most of us would want our natural sight. She was like, I ain't worrying about that. I'm not mad at the doctor who did it. I'm not going to have a nasty attitude. What I'm going to do is ask God, why does he have me like this? What's his purpose for my life? And you know what the Lord revealed to her? Your job is to write a song to me. Or think about this. What if God said your job is to sing to me? I was listening to Minister Carr today, but, but get this, get this church. Is that enough for some of us though? Because many people in church seek the position. You don't want the position. What you want is to make sure you're doing what God called you to do. 
Know this during this season, church, that you and God can handle anything. You got that? So what do we really see from the text? It's one o'clock. What do we really see from the text? You know what we find from the text? An innocent man came into our prison and shared our condition. Like I shared before, most of us, when we preach from Genesis 40, we see ourselves as Joseph. I'm here today to let you know that you're not Joseph today. You are either the baker or the butler. Jesus is Joseph. So point number one, an innocent man came into our prison and shared our condition. Thank you, God. He didn't do anything. I, I'd venture to tell you, he even switched places with you. We already know the story. He preached. He became the gospel for us. He became the sacrifice for us. So an innocent man came into our prison and shared our condition. Number two, the innocent prisoner revealed God's message to us. Ooh. Joseph's in there. He ain't guilty. He's innocent. But God positioned him to reveal a message to these brothers. Can God trust you enough today to put you in a place you don't really deserve to be in, but he put you there because he can trust you to get the message to the next person? The only way that he can really do that is if you're not inundated with your own with flesh and self. And then point number three, this innocent prisoner was proven to be true in three days. I really feel like this season that we're living in, it's not going to take God a long time to reveal himself and to do different things for us out we're living in that season right now where it's so heavy. The anointing is so heavy in the earth. It's like God is like looking for people that he can trust. Almost like he's desperate. That's the best way that I can put it, the way I sense it. He's desperate. Because watch this. Very few people want to spend an hour in prayer and then come out and have regular service. Think about it, y'all. Monday, Tuesday, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you would be surprised how many people we actually have on the prayer line. And we set it up where you can do it from anywhere. Is it that it's not that important to us? Is it that we're just that busy? I don't know about y'all, but Minister Jay's story scared me. Just think, at any given time, God can say, you know what, time's up. Have we done everything God has, we believe God has called for us to do within that time frame? If your answer is no, then we better get busy. Because there's work to be done. And so here's the thing, as I shared before earlier in our discourse, during this season, don't worry about trying to be known. Just do the work. The branding. Be compassionate about what it is that God has called you to do. Make sure you follow through with whatever it is that God has called you to. Are you with me? I shared it last week and I do it here quite often. Whatever it is that God has called you to do, do it to the best of your ability. Do it with excellence. Don't let anybody step in, else step in and do it. When God has called you to do it and you know it, do it to the best of your ability and watch God show up, show out for you. Watch what the text says. When a man's ways please the Lord, he will make even his to be at peace with him. So essentially, what does Joseph do? Joseph shows us Jesus whose message from God brings life or death. If you're looking for a message from God, look to Jesus.